I really think there should be at least one level higher. The challenge curve increase, the balancing and everything is really hitting its stride. Oh my god! Hey, what's up guys? So I wanted to do a gameplay analysis today. The game in question is going to be Swords and Sandals Immortals, which is the latest installment in the long-running Swords and Sandals franchise, which I think started like 20 years ago in the early Flash era. Now the developer is of course a friend of mine, Oliver Joyce, and he's been on this channel before and did a kind of gameplay analysis of my own game, Blood and Mead. So this is kind of me returning the favor. So I'll make some observations and critiques where necessary when I play it, you know, UX, gameplay, UI. So the version I'll be playing is the demo which is currently available through the Steam Next Fest. So I'll put a link to that down below should you want to play along with me or just check out the game yourself. Let's go. So we've got here. Look at all these species. Wow. Oh my goodness. If you've never played a game from Oliver Joyce or a Swords and Sandals game, they're very deep. A lot of stats, a lot of lore, and the writing is always very good. An Amazonian. A Glamazon. Okay. Wow, that's um. So you get a lot of like natural born perks. Um, Child of Sunlight, your damage is increased by 10% when fighting during the day. Ooh. Plus two strength bonus, I'd imagine so. <laughs> I'm thinking I might try to make a character that looks a bit like me. Uh, homeland. Yeah, so you've got so many sub homelands within the human species uh, to choose from. A bit of information here. And there's, you know, height, weight, char different characteristics. So he's essentially created a whole world here, you know, with, um, you know, each race has particular characteristics. I've got to find something that somewhat replicates this, um, this perm cut I've got going on here. <laughs> I was going to try to make it look like me, but instead of that, let's just go a bit wild. Oliver, if you're watching... I highly encourage you to add like pink, purple, green, blue, some bright hues because hair color, especially in 2022, you know, you got to have a few colorful options in there. <laughs> oh, these are great. Some really nice options here. Oh, wow, there's more height. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> This is epic and wait. Oh, what? <laughs> I mean, look, how can you not play this character? Why would you <laughs> I'm not picking that 50 kilos, no way. What's a good gladiator name? Gladios. <laughs> I don't know, let's go Xerxes. Haunt, Ra. I don't know. Eat my shorts. Mm. You might know this voice. It's Critical, the YouTuber, the massive YouTuber, and he was he did the voice for this game. One of many YouTubers who have been involved in this project. So you get a lot of different. Yeah. Descartes Kane. <laughs> okay, so this is me. These are the voices I did. But Ollie, I have to say, man, if you're watching this. I would recommend sticking a, like a, a music mute button somewhere here, simply because um, it makes it hard to hear the, the voices. Hold on, where's me? So I had a lot of fun doing these voices, and I remember just nearly ruining my voice. Oh, and then pitch. Go home to your mama. My goodness, the depth here. The depth of this game is absolutely insane. I've got a priest, warrior, wizard, rogue. Each with um, different characteristics. The bard has a taunt, a tremendous shout that does 29 sonic damage to your enemy. Jeez, man. Having played some of the previous Swords and Sandals games, I've got a feeling already, just by looking at this, these options, the depth, that this is going to be the best Swords and Sandals game. I really believe that. 
priest. I'm going to go warrior because that's usually what I kind of play with. Anytime I play an MMO or what, I'm always I'm always playing the boring warrior type. Primary stats. So five stats to choose from. Agility, intellect, defense, charisma, stamina, attack, vitality, strength. So I'll punch a few into strength. Vitality, attack. And if I was going like a magic build, I'd probably be wanting to look at intellect. Um, well, I've got one more. So I'll go into a more like I'll go into more like a strength build. All right, let's do this. Ooh, I'm excited. I'm excited. The tale of Xerxes begins. The realm of Brandor has been at peace for some years now. You are from a generation who has known no war or poverty. Kind of reminds me of our modern era, right? <laughs> So now we choose, I seek glory and power beyond my wildest dreams, or I wish to save our world from unimaginable evil, not for myself, but for others. I want glory and power! Most interesting. The world turns and the celestial tapestry continues to weave. Oliver, your writing, beautiful, very poetic. What do you choose for your reward? Gold? Potion or 10 stars. I'm not clear on what the stars are for at this point. So I'll take gold. Golden glory. 300 days until arrival. They're very ominous. Hail, citizen of Brandor. I'm Fight Selector 386DX. <laughs> so it's very very kind of mortal combat the you know versus screen and it's got um our power scores here let's see what happens we'll get straight into it i like that roll 11 or high to attack first so very you know this nods at the dungeons and dragons influence Is there an option screen here? I need to kill this music. So, okay, so here we go, guys. For those that don't know what this game is, is you're seeing this for the first time, like, what are you looking at? I know a little bit about the development of this game. So it's a turn-based combat RPG. Okay, one hit death, I win. You are victorious. Okay, so it just gives you a taste of the initial combat. I know that's the first fight, but I probably would have made it just a little bit longer, maybe a few hits. I mean, the one hit death thing. I mean, unless I just got lucky, right? But I feel like, um, yeah. You've defeated your first opponent. Congratulations. But as the great philosopher Mr. Muji once said, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. Rest now and meditate on what you have learned at the campfire. <laughs> The dialogue in this game and beer don't always mix. <laughs> Oliver is uh, quite the wordsmith. <sighs> okay, so we're leveling up. So at this point, the game is kind of just teaching us about the core game loop, um, giving us an idea of the, you know, the cycle which we need to go through. Uh, so we can now, we've got two points. So I'll pop another one into Vitality. Although I've got a feeling... Um, the thing is with these games where you have to distribute your stats, stats, you can really mess up your builds if you're not careful. Like if I just pumped all my points into like stamina right now and had no attack, you can pretty much break the game. Well, not break the game, but you'll have to reroll a new character. But I imagine here's a way of um, resetting stats. Most MMOs and RPGs have that. Great power flows through you. See, I feel like I'm missing out on some cool music. Alright, this is we'll have, we'll have it on, but a bit lower. How about that? Because I do like that music. So, what do we pick? Survival, warfare, theatrics. Let's go warfare. Oh, cool. 
so having um, played a Titan's Quest, I believe this uh, skill tree is influenced by um, Titan Quest. So Sword Mastery, Axe Mastery, Club Mastery. And if you go like Arcane, guys, again, look at this depth here. This is crazy. Okay, so I've put two into Sword Mastery. At this point, I'd probably, it's in my best interest to get my hands on the sword. Just one comment to um, Oliver, if you're watching. This is a really nice layout for this screen. I'm not sure about this background color though. It's like a parchment, I understand, but it's a bit kind of, um, maybe even a bit, a little bit muddy, I guess. I guess you, I think you could probably tweak that to be maybe a little bit brighter or something. Um, yeah, just my two cents. <sighs> okay, day 299. So who's this dude? Hail friend, stop a moment, let me look upon you. I see brilliance, raw power, and limited potential. So I'm gonna skip some of the text just because um, I don't want this video to go too long with people losing interest in just like me reading dialogue. I think the, the gameplay is where it's at, right? But obviously, if you do end up playing this game, you can take your time and get into the minutiae of all the different um, intricate dialogue. So you got the Weaponsmith, Campfire, Fight Selector. So this is kind of like the hub screen in between battles where you return to. You can see you've got some nodes here which are locked off. Really nice artwork and uh, like so many um, great UI, great uh, layout here. A lot of different interesting um, stats. I mean, not sure what all of them mean at this point. wonder if you should have like a rollover feature or not. Maybe that'll make it too busy. It gladdens the soul to see such a magnificent warrior before me. Okay, I'm gonna buy something. Wow, cool. I have many wondrous weapons, <laughs> each forged by my skilled hand. Um, these are the items I have today. Act fast or I'll ha for I'll have new stock arriving and these will be gone. Okay, so the shop keeps um, rotating weapons. A bit like in Skyrim, where if you go to a shop after a, the day and night cycle has ticked over, you get a different inventory, different wares. So I want a sword, don't I? Okay, so dagger, knife. Knife is eight, level two. I want that. Am I level two? I am level two. I want this. See, I'm glad I got the gold. So that's what I have. I have a shank equipped. So I'll definitely buy that. Campfire, what does that do? Do you wish to rest until tomorrow? Tomorrow fresh gladiators will uh, arrive to fight. In one day shops will be restocked with new items to buy, so no. Let's fight! We are about to die. Salute you. Okay, so I need to fight four battles and then beat the champion. So I can choose who I want to fight by the looks of it. <laughs> <laughs> Level three. Okay, let's go that one. Uh, level two kind of matches my level. It's gonna be <laughs> It's kind of cool hearing my own voice in the game. Um, okay, look at these stats. So he's got um. I can't remember what it said. He's higher than me to his stats. Boom, yes! I can attack first. So th that roll attack feature was actually only added like yesterday, I think. Prior to that, um, the enemy always... Well, actually, no. Oliver told me that whoever has the higher agility would go first. But that was kind of confusing and maybe not so fair. So we discussed it actually and together we came to the idea that maybe like a dice roll would be good. Um, so attack head, 48%. Let's try it. Parry. Oh. So there's a lot of um, information here that um, you got to, as you play the game, you get better at understanding what is being communicated here. You've got stamina, you've got your health. And you've got this thing here, which is like, um, I think it's like a stress meter, but it's not, it'll be like explained as the game goes on, I imagine. 
Ooh, see, I'm becoming stressed. Because um, the opponent is parrying all my attacks. Attack his legs, man. Jeez, come on. I've got a skill. Oh, warrior strike! Boom! Oh. Get out. You are victorious. So I can level up, which I will do. <sighs> Although I really wiped the floor with that last guy. But, um... Let's go pure strength. Sword mastery, more, more! <sighs> and I imagine the difficulty will ramp up significantly, you know? Training dummy. I definitely don't want to be doing that right now. I almost feel like the training dummy should have been the first opponent. I wonder. I kind of almost feels a bit weird to bring a training dummy in. Unless you can... Can you... Do you increase any stats? I imagine that the rationale was that if you're having fights and not having much luck and you keep losing, which I haven't lost yet, but I imagine if you were to keep losing, you may want to explore different strategies on how to beat your enemy. So you can go to that training dummy and try out different approaches, uh, different skills. We are about to die. Oh, we've got a uh, skeleton guy. I'll fight him. What level? I'm level three. I kind of want to... You know what? I'm going to go fight this guy because he's even... I would like to punch up if I can. Need my shots! Prepare to fight. Jeez. Oh, okay, so here... Okay, so he broke my armor. Ouch. So you see here, it tells you what armor you have. I think... Yeah. I didn't actually know I was wearing armor. I guess this is the default armor I had. Something like a leather tunic or something like that. Oh, so I can't attack because I'm too far away. Let's jump. Swipe diagonally in the direction of jump. Whoa! Oh, jeez. I'm on... Attack the head. Blocked. Attack the head. Jeez, man. Attack his arms. Critical. Walk back. Oh. Got him. <laughs> you are victorious. New level reached. Actually, I should be careful because I've got a feeling it's going to ramp up in difficulty. And I'll probably better have some vitality. Or even stamina at this point. Yeah. Let's get that. So we've got armor. Okay. By soul, this forge is hot. Let's buy some stuff. Uh, noob sandals. <laughs> I'll get that. I'm just thinking of how this information is communicated here. In Castlevania Symphony of the Night, for instance, I think um, the item has an indicator of whether it's better than what you have rather than being it being on what you currently have. I don't know. Let's try and work out what's more readable. What else has he got? I mean, I don't have that much money. Some of these things are a bit expensive. Max armor, 29. I mean, there's a big difference in armor rating. I'll take that. Cool, look at him now. We are about to die. Two more Sorry. fights, then we get to fight the champion. So that should be interesting. <coughs> oh, one of these Amazonians. Just as a point of feedback here, I'm, I'm currently level 4. I've got a level 2, a level 2, a level 3, and a level 4 opponent. I really think there should be at least one level higher. Like maybe one lower, one on the same level, one higher, and then maybe one that's like really high. Just for those that want to be, um, you know, test their fate, essentially. Because, um, I like... I could just 
beat down the level twos, but I'm also, I kind of want to have fun during the fight. And if I'm just one-shotting everyone, then it's not going to be that much fun. Um, that, that's the thing with, you know, balance in games. Can't be too hard, can't be too easy. you got to kind of find that sweet spot. Oh no. Parried though. Go for the head. 51% chance. Ooh. Ooh. Go for the legs! Oh, yes! Oh, jeez. My arm is falling off. Attack the arms. Attack the arms! See, I'm running out of health here as well. I could get... So this is where the strategy comes into it. I could get lucky and one-shot them. If I'm lucky. But if I miss, and they have a turn, they could one-shot me. So I have to make a choice. And at this point, I might get out of here. And then I'm going to rest. Because my stamina is very low. Okay. So you can rest during fights to gain back stamina and health. Also, head. Yes. See, the fights are getting a little bit more lengthy, a bit, a bit more difficult. When you when you pick a character, you could almost just kind of like put a stroke here, or just kind of highlight which one it correlates with. Like, even though it's pretty evident that there's four characters, there's four things here. Still, having that just kind of extra. Um, Clarity and communication in the UX is not a bad <gasps> thing to do. Oh. Who's it gonna be? Which YouTuber? Huge Charles! <laughs> I'm not sure if any of you guys watch this guy on YouTube, man. He's um, um, critical Penguin Z, whatever you want to call him. Great YouTuber. He's like, um, I don't know, like 10 million subs at this point. Stinky. <laughs> Take it easy, man. All right, let's do it. Come on, hey, I go first. So let's um look. Let's go for his head, man. Straight for the kill. He's tiny. I think the dude in real life is about five foot one or something, so it's uh, it's fitting. <laughs> oh god! Take it easy, man. Did I just cut his arm off? I think I just cut his arm off. He has no arm. He has one arm. Okay. <laughs> What are you going to do? That's why he's backing up. I mean, can you regrow his arm? You have lost to the arena champion. He just yelled at me and I died. <laughs> you must give 118 gold to your enemy. Can you imagine this game once it's multiplayer? And that kind of turn-based uh, strategic combat? I can see like a lot of potential. Obviously, to get a game balanced perfectly like this, it's going to not require a bit more work. But with all the, the the variety of skills and classes and stats that you can choose, um, I can imagine this could be like a very popular multiplayer game. Good, good, good. That's a good start. I think I've got to be less aggressive, maybe, and try to play the odds. Because 50, 50 chance of attack, you know, if you keep going for that. Parry. Dude! I just... Oh my god. I just exploded his heart. So I can choose or something. Um, plus one attack. Claim an iron club. I don't want an iron club, but... I don't know. Let me go the... Oh, do I get them all? Oh, only two. Very, very brutal. 
exploding his heart. I like it. <laughs> okay, so it looks like we're moving to a new region. Ah, man. God damn. This place is huge. You know, Oliver's games are, like, as I may have mentioned, heavily inspired by, like, um, Tolkien, Game of Thrones. I mean, that's part of the reason Oliver and I are friends, because we share a lot of um, a lot of interests. You know, we, we read similar books. We like similar shows. Can't go there yet. This is cool. I love this map, man. This is some fine cartography right here. So let's go here. Shackleford. Estimated travel time. So you've even got like, um, so you, you, you got time and days passing. Pleasant, if unremarkable land of gentle hills and farms. It is also renowned as the birthplace of the widely beloved Shackleford Whiskey. Very nice. We can adventure in camp. This adventure. What is that? Aha. Uh -huh. So this is like, um, you've got some side missions or side quests that run parallel to the main um, game loop. So it's kind of like a choose your own adventure type deal. There are dark powers involved. Malevolence is behind this. My late cousin, Antarius. <gasps> Your Antarius's cousin? No way! I like how the story is being revealed progressively as you move between um, areas. It's not all just kind of front-loading the story. I hate when games, they front-load too much story. Like, you just want to get into the game and it's just like all this text, you know, next, next, next. So it's kind of nice to spread that out over the game. I'm sort of stuck with, <laughs> I put all my eggs in one basket at this point. So if um, <laughs> I need to change weapons, I'm going to be kind of stuck. And I've got the Enchantress now. So progressively revealing um, sections of the game. That's good too, you know, not overwhelming the player like, here's a smith, here's a weapons trainer, here's a Enchantress. Kind of just um, staggering that reveal. Just not overwhelming them. Enchant. Is that working? Maybe not part of the demo. Oh, okay, it's cool. So I can buy potions. And look how many different things. It's going to be like uh, necklaces, trinkets. Probably buy a potion. Small healing thimble. I'll get that. And maybe a stamina potion. It's always a good idea. Brigand vest, 2000. That's something to look forward to. Nice range of items, you know, and some of these like aspirational items. Even though the game knows you don't have that money, it puts it in the shop just to kind of show you the potential, you know, like what you might have later on. Some more like mid-game or end-game gear. That first town was more or less like a tutorial town. And this is where the real fighting begins. And I say this because I made a comment in the last um, realm or area, in the last town, that all the enemies were kind of my level or lower. But now in this area, we we'll see we actually have higher level enemies. Wow, his vitality is 14. Okay. That might be a problem for me. <laughs> I think it had a temperature gauge. What is the temperature of the of the environment? It's like 14 degrees. Yeah, look. <laughs> oh man, this game is intense. 10 a.m. clear. 14 degrees mild in the forest. These are the kind of stats you might find in a, like a racing game, like Gran Turismo. They'll tell you, you know, sunny, clear, nighttime. <laughs> and so cool. <laughs> I've not, you don't see that often, that kind of level of intricate detail. But knowing Ollie, knowing how he thinks and how he codes his games, that temperature probably has an effect on some classes, it probably has an effect on how well some particular. Because you know how you have these like natural birth signs of different races. Some might have uh, get benefits from cold weather. So if it's snowing, you might get like a higher vitality or something. But my God, this music! So I feel like we're really entering the game at this point. The music has changed. I'm 
doing well though. Oh, I can't attack. Ah, because my stamina is so low, you see. It's blocked off my attacks. So I need to rest. Aha. Uh -huh. Let me rest again. I mean, this guy's done for. Use my skill. Warrior Strike. Dodged. Dude, he's holding on. Go down already. His legs. He's inspired. Because <laughs> he parried two attacks in a row, he's suddenly feeling inspired. <laughs> ah, let's get this over with. I wonder if um, breaking your armor has an effect on du um, durability after the fight. I wonder if you have to... Dude, this guy's holding on. Now he's running away. Take a moment to appreciate the AI that is going on behind the scenes here. Like, obviously the AI has detected that he has low health, and now it's just like running away. <sighs> so he's, the enemy has run away so he can recoup some HP, some stamina. <sighs> it's very intelligent, you know? And still backing up. <sighs> and now it's like, you know, pulling off some kind of, <laughs> some kind of um, enchantments. It's really cool. Like, as a game developer myself and a programmer, I know how hard it can be to um, program AI, and I've been doing a lot of um, AI programming myself lately. So he's got a bit of health. Head! Ooh. He's gone. He's... This enemy won't go down! Thank you. Jeez, that... Oh, very high intelligence. <laughs> My character has an intelligence of one. <laughs> and they had 16. So they, they might actually be a magic caster. Oh, that music. Dude, I just took half his health with one hit. It's broken my breastplate. Okay, now I'm hurting. Uh, walk forward. It's a, it's a Hadouken! <laughs> Jeez, okay. So yeah, it was a caster after all. And of course I have no um, magic protection, right? Because I put all my stats into like strength and attack. This guy's tough. I can feel it already. Did he just cut my leg off? What if I try to jump with a broken leg? Oh, I can't jump! <laughs> of course, right? It makes sense. Man, I gotta tell you, this game is really hitting a rhythm now from... Maybe it's just the music. No, but it's really hitting a rhythm. Like, I'm feeling the the challenge curve increase, the balancing and everything is really hitting its stride. With that first section, um, it was fun, but I was definitely felt like I was overpowered for some of those early enemies. But of course, that was like day one, day two of the game, you know, which and is like 300 uh, days, so... Uh, makes sense. You've got to ease people into it. What do I do here? This guy's going to kick me out, kick my ass. I'm going to... I got very lucky. <laughs> Fighting with one leg. And I've leveled. Nice. You know, the game is getting a bit more tricky and now there's like magic casters around. I don't know, defense against, ma against magic maybe. And shop discounts, that's nice. Yeah, like this kind of stuff is also a little bit essential I feel like. Oh, next tier of... Warfare. Dual wielding! Wield a melee weapon in each hand. Reduces hit chance penalty one by 1%. One Two-handed weapon mastery. Man, there's so much here. Ultimate warrior. Each consecutive hit after the first increases damage by 
Or should I go to survival and um, get like frost protection, fire protection, lightning protection? Man, some of these interesting skills that are coming later on. Necromancy protection. Kind of gives you an idea of uh, what's coming up in this game. Where people raising the dead and stuff. Beast of burden. Acrobatics. I'm gonna go, um, you know what, I'm gonna go survival. And add some defensive techniques. Why not? <sighs> 6 a.m. Clear, let's do this. Oh jeez, I have money. No, you know what? I should I should buy something. Because it's a hell of a waste. Because if I lose and I, I um my money gets cold. And remember, every day there's new weapons. Right, so this sword here is slightly better than mine. I might just get that. Fine choice. Even my father would have been proud of this weapon. Okay, so I might sell that um, knife. Hey, I thought I had a... Oh, I've been using a mace? Where did I... Where... Oh, this came from... I see. I think I won that mace when I beat the area champion and I got three rewards. I'll keep that actually. But I'll sell that and I might as well sell that shank now. Cannot sell item. Okay, so you, you have to keep at least one default item. So three more and I get to fight the, um, the champion. No doubt it'll be another YouTuber that I'm facing. I'm, I'm not sure which one. Maybe it'll be PewDiePie or something. Maybe it'll be like Danny. I don't know. Because I know that um, Danny, the uh, game dev, devlogger um, dude, he made a video before about Swords and Sandals saying it's like one of his favorite <laughs> games. This franchise has been, uh, has inspired a lot of people. And it's come such a long way from its, you know, um, early Flash um, origins. I mean, just graphically as well, just such a big contrast. My stamina is getting a bit low here at this point. But I might as well go all out and see how far I get. Yeah, see, I've got... I had a good lucky blow there. <sighs> I got four health still, so I'm not really concerned. <laughs> you are I mean, I would comment to the developer and say, um, just be careful that there aren't easily accessible builds that just allow the player to keep winning fight after fight. I mean, I kind of feel like with combat games, losing is part of the um, experience. Like, you can't just always be winning. Like, even if you play Street Fighter or whatever. Like, you win a few, you lose a few. You win a few, you, you lose a few. At the moment, I feel like I'm winning a lot more than I'm losing. That might change very quickly. And even though later on in the game, that might very well be the fact where, you know, the difficulty curve increases, I think it's important to get, um, not let the players be disinterested in that early uh, few hours of gameplay. <laughs> like, you know, I just smashed that guy. So basically, I've just had like two or three, was it two fights in a row where I pretty much just like one shot or two shot the enemies. And, you know, so I guess the question is how many times in a row as a player, are you going to kind of 
<laughs> let that be the case before you're like, eh. <laughs> yeah, but so that's that's very much the reason Ollie's put this demo out. It's going to be going into early access for this very reason to kind of really get that balancing under control. <laughs> Because games like this, with so many different skills, so many stats, I can't even imagine the effort it would take to, to get the balancing right. Because, you know, when you have that many variables, there's always um, pathways to... Um, you, 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 you find ways to basically overwhelm the system and either just constantly win or whatever. And you find that even with MMOs and games that have, you know, AAA development teams that they often struggle with the balancing. But yeah, I mean, so far so good, right? I mean... I almost feel like um, better to make it harder than easier, I suppose. So, so far, I've only really been challenged by the area champions. <sighs> so far, the, the kind of standard enemies haven't really been a massive challenge. And it could just be this build, like, it's such a high attack build. Very sophisticated game. As a game developer, I wouldn't even well dare <laughs> making a game with so many... Um, so many variables. I mean, this, <laughs> this is a heroic effort, man. Oh, area champion. Here we go. There's gonna be Tutti the Jovial. I don't know this guy. Maybe you guys, um, Watching this, know who that is. I'm almost sure it's a YouTuber of some prominence. Music changes for the area champions, it's cool. Back in a Where are you going? Where are you going? Come back here. Attack the arms. Cut his arm off. I have very. I have not. Man, my stamina is low. <sighs> Oh my god! Lost can... to the arena champion. Man, my heart. Look at my heart over here. What do I lose? 240 gold. Okay, so it's getting... <laughs> these guys are a challenge, these area area champions. So I should try the fight. Uh, I might just try that fight again. Oh, actually, I have a bit of money. Man, I should really just... Yeah, I don't want to be losing this money. What can I get? What can I get? Finally, I can get that helmet. Yep, I'll take that. Take it, it's yours. Now let me get back to my work. Probably should learn some magic. Just never really, I'm never really drawn to the magic, um, magic builds. I'm more of an axe in the face kind of guy. 14 degrees, mild. Perfect time to fight. 7 a.m. So he's gonna do it again. He's already broken my my pants and my my shoes. Oh! Oh my God! You are victorious. 
for it. Mentality. See, you can get lucky in this game. And I've I played an earlier build of this, and I had a real tough time with this boss. In fact, I fought them like I want to say like five times. I, I just could not make any ground. But you can get lucky. Because it's a numbers Human game. The champion has been defeated. Oh how Xerxes, champion of Shackleford. Take that. We are about to die. Salute you. Step through the portal. Okay, so then it's like an arena, like a stadium where you fight. Oh, that's the end of the demo. <laughs> In May of this year, the adventure will continue as I hear it battles their way through Brandor in a valiant effort to save the world from the Starbound Gladiator. Thanks for being part of the journey so far. Without your support, there is no swords and sandals. Remember to wishlist the game on Steam to be notified when it launches in early access. I'm certain this will be the greatest swords and sandals adventure of all time and the beginning of an amazing new era for the series. Cheers, Oliver Joyce, Whiskey Barrel Studios. I agree. There's, um, there's a lot to like about this game. You know, this, um, just that gameplay loop, I really like that rhythm of it. You know, you, you level, you wake up, you use the shop, you upgrade your gear, you fight, you level, you upgrade your armor or something, then you go back and fight. And then you move to a new area in the world and it progressively gets increased. It's got a really tight game loop. Wishlist on Steam. Don't mind if I do. So there we have it, guys. Swords and Sandals Immortals. You can get that demo that I just played from the Steam page, which I'll link down below as part of the Steam Next Fest. So you might want to get that before it's like gone, basically. So I had a lot of fun playing this, and I think there's so much potential. Just the, the depth of just the statistics and all the different classes. And I mean, try just imagine that with multiplayer. You know, logging into a lobby with, you know, level 50 or 100 with crazy helmets and throwing fireballs with custom taunt messages and victory messages it's going to be like epic man so i'm i can't wait to see how this unfolds guys and you know i think this is easily going to be the best swords and sandals game so congratulations to oliver on getting this far i know you've you know had a <laughs> you've been um, a little bit stressed with this um steam next fest getting everything set up and you know doing the streams and everything so congratulations on getting this far and getting the demo out i think it looks really good so nice one man and thanks to everyone for watching and i'll see you all in the next video bye